Hello, and thank you for joining us for this webisode on bullying, specifically what can parents do to stop bullying. This is part of a webisode series that is being sponsored by the Mission Healthy Living. Joining me today are two wonderful guests. Uh, first, we have Sharon Jampercaro, and you are a Deputy District Attorney with the Montgomery County DA Office, and you're also the Chief of the Juvenile Division. That's correct. So welcome. Thank you. Um, and also joining us is Mary Anders, and she is a detective with the <coughs> Montgomery County DA Office. So let's get right to it, ladies. Um, this is such an important part of this webisode. Um, Sharon, once a parent has talked with their child, they've determined that they are being bullied, um, what are some first steps a parent should take? I think that can be an overwhelming experience, finding out that your child is hurting so much. Um, and are these steps different for cyberbullying versus bullying at school? Thank you, Marcia. There are a couple of first steps um, outside of cyberbullying for regular bullying. I like to narrow it down to like three first steps. And the first one would be to gather information, which is very important to get the um, where, when, how type of information to make sure that a parent creates a written record of all of the information coming in. And to, while doing that, try not to let your child see that you're upset. The second step with respect to bullying would be to contact the school. And this is a really important step, whether or not the bullying occurs on school property or whether or not it occurs during school hours because you want the school to be on notice and maybe be on the lookout mm -hmm. for um, what bullying might occur. And in the course of doing that, I would suggest to parents that it might not be a good idea to contact the parents of the bully. Okay. The school will be doing that, um, instituting those sort of meetings. I think that uh, would be a natural inclination. Like, what are you doing to my kid? What's your kid? Yeah. So kind of step back from that. Try to refrain from that. A little bit. Try and remain calm. Try and focus on trying to gather information from your child. Ask open-ended questions mm -hmm. from the child. Um, regarding who do they sit with at lunch and can they are there any eyewitnesses to any of these incidents okay. and that sort of thing and then notify the school and when you contact the school it's a very good idea to make an appointment okay um, with the school and purpose of that appointment would be not to only let the school know about what's going on but you want to ask the school what information they might have for example have they noticed that your child is um, being bullied in the classroom. Do they notice that your child is uh, has friends? Is your child socializing? And to ask to be kept informed so that uh, don't be afraid or hesitant that if you haven't heard back from the school in a few weeks, you know, to go back and say, have you heard anything new? And to make sure that you keep all of your written records, a copy for, both for the parent and for the school. And the last step outside of the cyberbullying would be um, to try and educate your child to how do you endure the bullying while it's going on because it's not going to stop immediately. Right. Um, some of the tactics for doing that um, might be to avoid the avoidance technique. For example, if the bullying is occurring in the bathroom, maybe the child should be using a different bathroom. If it's at the school locker, perhaps uh, approaching the locker from an alternate route or going to the locker at different times. If it's on the school bus, maybe suggesting that the child switch their seats perhaps closer to the bus driver. Um, you might want to remove the incentive for a temporary time. For example, not take a laptop mm -hmm. to school, not take a cell phone or an iPod and that sort of thing. Great. Um, and encourage the child that uh, to use a poker face. Try not to show that you're upset. Mm -hmm. You know, keep your shoulders high, maintain eye contact. One of the most important strategies in encouraging your child to endure the bullying is to strategize. Mm -hmm. What do you think you'll say the next time the bully comes up? And how will the bully react if you say that? Or what do you think you'll do? And this will give the child some control, some participation in finding a resolution, which always helps. And that's just for the straight bullying. Right. Now, of course, with cyberbullying, um, there are some additional steps. Uh, cyberbullying involves the bullying that is done through technological or channels such as email, text messaging, right. blogs, websites, Facebook, MySpace. I could go on and on, on, and, on. on and on. <laughs> exactly, and and it's really a, a cowardly form of bullying because it can it can be done anonymously. It can be done by one child or a group of children ganging up on one child, and and unfortunately, it holds the most potential for. Um, really devastating effect because the audience can be vast. So if a parent knows that their child is being cyberbullied, should they follow the same steps, stay calm, 
uh, address it with their child, hold on to the evidence, that kind of thing? Like, should they print stuff out? Well, the first step with cyberbullying is to gather information and preserve everything. Okay. Do not delete any emails. Okay. Um, you know, save all of your messages. Um, if you can attempt to track, if it's anonymous, the bully through your internet server provider. If it's a text message, it's very important to save the text message and to contact your cell phone company right away because many cell phone companies will only save those text messages for up to 30 days. With respect to the bullying that's occurring online, do not respond. Now, if the bullying okay. continues, then you can instruct your child to indicate to the bully, do not contact me again. Mm -hmm. Then log offline and remain offline for at least 24 hours okay. uh, thereafter. I think it's imperative to, to know, too, what Sharon mentioned as far as the evidence goes, is that if it is truly anonymous and you don't know who that is sending that to your kid, that's what then makes our job easier if we have the information. But if, if you delete the text messages or delete anything from an email, right. your provider may not have that information. Okay. So, um, especially a text message, if your kid gets it and decides to delete it and it is anonymous, there's not much we can do. Okay, well, that, and, that, that's, and, and that kind of brings up my next question, Mary, is um, when do you get the police involved? When you say there's not much that we can do, what, what, what point do you bring the police in and, and what level does it have to escalate to? Should you start right away? Like, you, you've taken the steps, what you've done, but should you contact the police right away? How do you know when to I think to it, it depends on what's being said and what's being sent. If it's, if it's words just about, you know, nobody likes you or, you know, something along those lines, maybe just putting the kid down, it may be an issue that just is handled through the school if you know who it is. If it gets to a point where it's threatening or your child you feel is in danger, if there's pictures sent that aren't appropriate or that might lead the child really to be scared for their own safety, absolutely you can call the police. Okay. Um, I think it depends on the content and it depends on how often it's sent. It depends on, and even the parent's safety. Do they believe that they have a level of comfort level that they think, is this kid going to come to my house and do something to my child? It, it depends on the actual content of it. It doesn't mean you can't call the police if your kid is receiving these over multiple times. Uh, even if it's something, again, innocuous as nobody likes you, you should just leave school. But if it's repeated and it's every day, it's like harassment. it is. That's it does get into a harassment issue, right. which is something that we, you know, that we can charge. It, it, it's the content and how many times that your child receives. Should your child, you know, somebody sends you the terrible text message or Facebook, a first reaction might be to respond and go, no, I'm not, or, you know, whatever. Is that going to eventually hurt the child if they've responded to the bully? Should they, you said just to shut it down, stop communication for 24 hours. But what if the child has responded? What if they've lashed out or tried to stick up for themselves? Is I can tell you that it, there, it is an issue. If, if the child starts giving back pretty much as they're getting, if, if the language is bad, if the, uh, if the pictures are graphic, and then the child starts responding numerous times with the same graphic language or bad language, that is going to be an issue whether we can do something. If it's the first time and the kid can explain, look, I was just taken off guard, I didn't know what to do, right. okay, we can kind of deal with it. But if we then get your computer or your cell phone or your messages and see that, you know, every, every time you got a message, you got 20 messages and there's 22 responses, that's a problem we'd have to overcome. Okay. So our, our advice always to parents is don't respond, but if you did respond, stop responding now. Right. And definitely, as you said, don't call other parents. No. Don't, don't respond back. Right. Don't lash out. Take the steps. Go through the school. If you feel it's necessary, bring in the police and, and go from there and let right. them guide them through the because process. Because with cyberbullying, most times you aren't going to know who it is that's doing it to you. Okay. Because they might have a fake Facebook account, they might have a Gmail account that you don't recognize. I mean, you might have an inkling, but what? Here's the situation: What if you go and contact that parent? It's not the right kid. Exactly. Exactly. Well, so. thank you both very, very much. This has been wonderfully informative. I know at the end of this uh, webisode, we're going to show some resources, some websites that parents can possibly go to to get some more information. Uh, to view other webisodes on bullying, please go to www.missionhealthyliving.org.